You are listening to Grammy's Rocket Chair on RLM Radio. The girl of your dreams has got to be in some bar. Sorry, boys and girls, but this is X-rated. So if you're under 18... Get out, goddammit! Get the point. Good. And now... Bend over. Y'all ready for this? We do it all night long. And now, your host, Grammy. Oh! 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 oh. <laughs> oh, hey there, everybody. This is Grammy Mary, and I'm in my rocket chair, and I'm heading off for that full moon tonight, because, you know, you can't... It, When you're out in space, you don't get to see a full moon unless it's a full moon. Because that's what they say. (laughs) I don't know who the hell they are, but, you know, or maybe I just made that up. (laughs) I'm going to bark at it, though, no matter what. Unless that storm hits, and then I'm not going to see the moon. Because, man, I got a big, bad, and nasty with a shitload of lightning that's heading right at me. So, just wanting to let you know, I might get kicked tonight you never know in any case it is a full moon freaker friday and a total lunar eclipse but you can't see it from here got to be in india in order to see it and quite frankly i don't think i have any listeners over in india so i think we're good to go (laughs) oh my lord uh let's see what okay I'm checking out what's going on over here in the chat. In any case, uh, yeah, you're listening to Grammy's Rocket Chair on RealLibertyMedia.com, Channel 10, or on the RLM uh, Spreaker Channel, or RLMRadio.xyz, or RLM TuneIn Radio Station, or RLM Internet Radio Station, or God knows where else we're at. And later we'll be on the RLM YouTube Channel and the RLM BitChute Channel. So, booyah, BitChute. You know, that sounds like bitch shoot but maybe that's just me too i don't know in any case i do have something about the lunar um happenings this evening so yeah i'll get to that here in a minute but first over here on twitter i lost a stalker and then i gained a stalker so hey it's all good and yeah what is all this shadow banning shit i really don't care You know, I put stuff on Twitter that I feel like sharing, and if somebody sees it, great, and if nobody sees it, great, and, you know, I put it on there, because it's out there in the interwebs, and if it's something I happen to agree with, then maybe, just maybe, it'll be one of those things that, um, you know, someone else will pick up on somewhere down the road. I probably won't know about it, but that's okay, too. So, oh, wow, that's, that's cool. I'm going to have to click on that link i just saw something from twitter and it's like whoa that's kind of creepy but thank you barman for tweeting me out over here on twitter i truly do appreciate it i see that you say i'm irreverent and irrepressible and insightful and someone else called me something else (laughs) and annoying and i will agree to that i will agree to the annoying part i try to be annoying sometimes so um, I also see the lovely Tessa is over here. Hi, Tessa. How are you doing, sweetheart? Uh, da, 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 da. I'm checking my notifications. Yeah, and things could get bumpy tonight. They could get really bumpy, but that's okay. Because sometimes life is bumpy. It's, you know, for me, it's a roller coaster. Up, down, someone throws a loop-de-loop in the middle when I'm not ready, and I probably shit myself. But, you know, who else hasn't done that? I want to know one person on this planet that has not shit themselves. I want to meet that person and go, what the hell's wrong with you? Jeez, that's just weird. You know, everybody does that at least once in their life. At least once. So, moving along. <laughs> now that I've given given you entirely too much information in just that little bit. Over here on this Effin site, they got a reprieve. They got enough money. So, yeah, it's up until August 23rd. Unless we don't get enough donations to keep it up. So, please donate to 
keep that Freedoms Network up and running because it really is a pretty freaking awesome site. Over here, I see Grimner. Thank you, Grim, for sharing it that I am on. I also see he's sharing stuff from Carlin, which, yeah, Carlin, mm-hmm, yeah, Carlin and Zappa. They're the two. They knew. And, well, and then uh, Bill Hicks. Yeah, he knew, too, but, you know, they're gone now. Huh. Imagine that. Hmm. Okay, I also see Katie Troxell was over here as well as Bob Renner and Cowboy Tech. Hey there, hi there, ho there. Now, over here on the mind thing, I totally spazzed off saying anything to Minds or sharing the RLM tweet. So, hi, anybody on Minds that might be listening in. And if you're not, that's cool, too. You didn't hear that. It's okay. Now, over here on Fakie Book, I don't know that I see a whole hell of a lot over here on Fakie Book either, other than my youngest daughter posted something which I happen to agree with um, respect common courtesy and morals no longer is it exist in the world however karma still exists and what goes around comes around however selfish ungrateful nitwits are like pennies and they are everywhere and virtually useless just saying which yeah honey I know I get that. Mm -hmm. And uh, Brother Joey, who used to come and play in the RLM chat, but he's got a grandson at his house, so I'm sure he's got other things to do. He said that most of humanity is just a series of orange traffic cones on your highway of life. Just got to learn to drive around them. Seems like a fun idea to run them over, but damage to your undercarriage accumulates and it ain't worth it. So... <laughs> Yeah, my family. They're weird. Other than that, there's not a whole heck of a lot going on over here on Fakie Book either. So, hey, dear Catherine has been checking in occasionally. She's been a busy, busy girl of late. And now, if you want to gift me static, come on over to reallibertymedia.com. Join the chat. Think of a nickname. Jump in. Both feet or both hands since we're doing cybernetic. Unless you can type with your feet. And then that's way cool. Bonus round. But, um, yeah. So, let's see. What? Who? Ha? He? Oh, Meisterbrow's over here, too. Yeah. Also, I'm also, I have the red pill open. So, yay! Yay! And Katie Troxell is listening to Free Speech Radio by Gab. Cool. I have a Gab account. Gab.ai. I just... I've only been there a couple of times. I probably ought to go check it out again. Maybe it's not as, uh, oh, I wasn't impressed <clears throat> as it used to be. I don't know. It was just starting up. So I can go give it a shout. Give it a check. In any case, so this evening, it is a Freaker Friday. And it is a Full Moon Friday. And it is a Lunar Eclipse Friday. So trifecta on a Friday. And seeing as how we are talking about the moon, I saw this one earlier today. Actually, I typed in full moon in my DuckDuckGo search just because I wanted to see what kind of stuff was out there on the full moon tonight. And uh, I found this from mindbodygreen.com. How to Harness the Transformative Power of Tonight's Full Moon and Total Eclipse. And it's by the Astro Twins. They are astro astrologers and best-selling authors. And they are twins. They're blonde. I'll share it here in a minute. In any case, <clears throat> power to the people. Yep, on July 27, 2018, at 4.20 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, a blood moon total lunar eclipse in revolutionary Aquarius stirs up our righteous urge for freedom fighting and sparking social change. Hey, that sounds like, and that happened. Okay, for me, that was a little over a half hour ago. Well, coming up on an hour ago. Cool, and I didn't notice. I was still on the way home. In any case, because, yeah, I went to an antique engine and thresher show, and it really was pretty cool. God dang, so they had some. I'll tell you about it after I'm done with this. Squirrel. <laughs> 
So this celestial spectacle marks the midpoint of the summer 2018 eclipse season. And, yes, what's that, Grimmy? Watch out when searching for a full moon. Oh, I know, Grim, because, you know, sometimes the full moon that you're getting has a crack down the middle. <laughs> and I don't know that I necessarily want to see that kind of shit on the interwebs, you know? I'm just not into that kind of stuff. So, um, what? Ooh, Gap Guys got called racist. What? 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 Okay, back to whatever. You know what? I forgot to say hey to everybody in RLM. I am like totally squirreling tonight. See? Full moon. Oh! Okay, let me say hey to full moon to all these full mooners out here <laughs> in the RLM. And then I'll get back to this article. God, I am such a spaz. Jeez, oh, Pete. Um, pretentious. That's what it was. I was called pretentious. I pretend a lot. Is that what that means? <laughs> I know better. But I can use it in a sentence. In any case, hi there, barman, the most splendiferous bot in the whole wide world over here right up top in the in the uh, RLM chat. I also see Grimner, who is the RLM god, closely following barman because, well, you know, you got to keep track of barman because make sure he puts all that cash from the drinks back in the till i also see the lovely moose girl is here is it going to be a freaker ball tonight or a balls to the wall kind of night just curious asmo is also logged in as well as chalcedony chloe and chloe -E are both here as well as don or d underscore c which is i be don c i know him um, well, at least cybernetically. I also see Free Enslaved is here. Hi, Free Enslaved. How are you doing, sweetheart? I'm here, kind of, sort of. Really, it is just kind of, sort of tonight because I'm like frazzled, apparently. I be Don C is also here, as well as Java, 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 Java Doctor 2. And looky there, JJ, the Scottish feller is here. Are you wearing your kilt? I kilt you. <laughs> Never mind. Hi, Juana Taco. That does sound yummy, but I got leftovers to eat. So, yeah, no tacos tonight. Meister Brower. Hey, Woody. How you do? I'm so glad you found your magnet. I really am, because I know that makes me crazy. I wander around the house looking for something, and two weeks later when I'm looking for something else, I find what I was originally looking for. It's, in it's infuriating as hell. The lovely Kate is also here, as well as the lovely Rain. I also see RLM Fluke, the Vanna White of the RLM channel. And looky there, Rob works, but I have not seen a bubbler fired up yet. Rob, are you just logged in and not bubbling? Hmm, I need some bubbles, Rob. Trust No One is also here. Hey, you trusty feller. As well as Phantom 2, the phantom of the chat. Colfax 101 and Cyborg Noodle, a cyborg noodle. Mmm, that sounds kinky. Dakota, as well as Death Spa. And there's Frumpy, who already said howdy to me. Hi, Frumpy, how you doing? I'm dressed frumpy. I got home and I put on my yoga pants. I needed some expansion room because, well, yeah, I ate at the Thresher show and it's very good. <laughs> yeah, I walked a lot of it off, but not near enough. Hi, Kozu. How are you doing, sweetheart? I also see Moy 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 as well as Poxy Fide and Poxy Phone. Pribib. Pribibs is here, blah, 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 as well as pom pom, -pom sauce and sock puppet. Hi, sock, as well as the F Bominator, Skittle, and to round out the crew, long time no see. Hi, Slim Jim Flim, how you doing? Um, let me see, what's going on over here in the, in the red pill? Dead cult girls, mom, hot, hum, hot, hmm, yeah, what? Okay, y'all are covering some weird shit over here yeah over in the red pill it's dc ib donzi apostle barman beth z fc fc anella okay frumpy two me grim java 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 doctor katie troxel moose girl poxified rlm fluke rob works surly and tor so yeah all those fun people over there 
Ah, uh, Oh, you got steer horns on the front of your trailer? Is that for steering? But um bum bum. Um Oh. Oh, sweetie, I'm sorry. I don't never do my show naked. <laughs> well, actually, actually, I am naked under my clothes, so I guess, yeah. There you go. But I have my door wide open, and I really don't want to scare the neighbors. So, <laughs> back to this article now. Now that I've finally gotten my shite together, um, this article from Mind Body Green about the full moon and the transformative powers of it and the total eclipse that happened almost an hour ago. Um, so, this celestial spectacle marks the midpoint of the summer 2018 eclipse season, and the full moon in communal idealistic Aquarius arrives with extra potency as a total blood moon lunar, lunar eclipse. It's the second in a trio of galvanizing eclipses be, um, happening between July 12th and August 11th of this year. Wow! Damn, overachieving moon? So, riding the waves of these future forward moonbeams comes a message that rings loud and clear to set aside our differences and come together for the greater good. Oh, you know, that has given me such a off-kilter feeling every time someone says, well, it's for the greater good. Yeah, that usually means I'm going to take it in the shorts. And I'm not liking that. But, you know, I think that's, I think that was done intentionally as well, you know, to get people to stop thinking about, you know, what, what's best for the collective, because what you don't realize is what happens to one happens to all. It does affect us all. So, for the greater good, take care of yourself and be kind, rewind, all that fun stuff, and maybe you will be an example I got something about that, too, here in just a little bit. So, the Aquarius full moon of 2018 arrives as a catalyst for change. As the Earth passes through the bold sun and the moon to create a garish, otherworldly, reddish glow known as a blood moon, which can only happen during a full moon, and cast shadow on its otherwise illuminated surface. So... July's total lunar eclipse is a rare event as the light from our life-giving sun will become blocked for one hour and 43 minutes. Wow, that's a long one. That's the longest totality of the 21st century. But alas, for those of us here in North America, this lunation won't be visible since it will occur in the late afternoon. But for our friends on the other side of the world, we hope you enjoy the show. But wait... There's more. Yes, I have a flasher going on. Um, actually, Grim, my birthday is next week, Friday, and thank you for reminding me. I won't be here because I will be in Colorado with the grandbabies. My daughter's taking me to an 80s concert <laughs> in the park with the grandkids. So, yeah. I will be in Colorado next week, Friday, for my birthday. So, sorry, no rocket chair on next Friday. So, it's the third, Graham. One day before Dangleberries, which, thank God, his mother held it long enough to where we aren't birthday twins. Ew. And, point of fact, I actually just barely made it on the third. Because, yeah, I think I was born at 12.28 in the morning, something like that. So, in any case, back to this article. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Okay, but wait, there's more. Joining the alignment of the sun, earth, and moon is passionate Mars, which will, pos or which will be positioned at its closest to earth since 2003, appearing brighter and more reddish than usual to the naked eye, which I have noticed Mars in the sky. And astronomers call this interplanetary lineup Syzygy. 
Is that what it is? S Y Z Y G Y. That's what I'm calling it, damn it. So, since planets appear brighter when they're directly behind Earth and directly in the path of the sun's light. Ah, I did not know that. So, for the next six weeks, take a peek at the red planet through a telescope if you can, if you can for the best viewing, which I don't have a telescope, so I have binoculars. Now, as a total lunar eclipse, the Aquarius full blood moon is also known by some Native American tribes as the full buck moon. Buck naked. Oh, maybe not. Since it is around the same time of year that new antlers begin to push up through a young buck's forehead. Others have called this lunation the full thunder moon since thunderstorms tend to coincide with the height of the summer months. And yeah, let me just check my radar again because yeah last time i checked it was beelining beelining for me well not necessarily me but my area so with aquarius or aquarian energy in the cosmic mix this star map helps us visualize our ideal futures now okay bring it up oh oh hey it might just go just west of me. We'll get rain, but not the nastiness. Yes! That works for me. I could do without the nastiness, because there's a shitload of lightning strikes in that bad boy. It's taking a turn to the south. Okay, so back to this article. Squirrel. So, hey, <laughs> now back to astrology. That was your little weather report for me. In any case, high-minded Aquarius is the sign of collaboration, groups, and humanitarian efforts. It's all about uniting around a higher cause and the creative impulse to fight for our beliefs. Now, this sign is more about universal love than intense one-on-ones, and the casual water bearer can get nervous under the heat of too much passion and emotion. This is friendly, convivial, and, or convivial energy at its best, and platonic, playful, and decidedly not romantic. But who cares? Well, Aquarius is irresistibly fun, likable, and adorably goofy, making this liberating lunation a good time to be shared by all. And my eldest daughter is an Aquarian. Actually... Yes, Meister Brower, I'm going to be 29 and holding. Actually, let's see, I'll be 14. I will be 14, which breaks, and when you add those two, I'll be five, I'll be five years old. <laughs> so, <clears throat> back to this. With Aquarian energy in the cosmic mix, this star map helps us to visualize our best ideal futures. And then connect to the right people who can help us bring the big picture to life. So when in doubt, take the unconventional route. Oh, I do that a lot. It's called the scenic route around my place. Now, Aquarius is the sign that governs teamwork and technology. And there will be group victories to celebrate this week. Or deep desire to find our tribes. Ah, I already have a tribe of gals on my phone. Now... Turn on the searchlight. Those kindred spirits could be revealed within the next two weeks. So, you feel like making the world a better place? Well, Rebel Rouser Aquarius guides us toward greater humanitarian missions. Whether your big-hearted endeavors involve global activism or a little community cleanup, there's strength in numbers, too. So, no good deed is too small but why not go a little bigger and invite your social network to get in on these kind acts? So, you say you want a revolution? Well, let's make some wishes or intentions and uh, get the movement underway. Meantime, here are star power tips to liberate yourself and pave the way for some serious ch, ch changes at Aquarius full moon, blood moon, total lunar eclipse. So, 
Seven ways to welcome tonight's Aquarius full moon, which it's already happened, but hey, welcome it anyway. Number one, embrace weird science. Oh, I love that movie. <laughs> I do, I do, I do, I do. Um, so you secretly believe that aliens inhabit the earth and live amongst us. And, you know, come to think of it, that neighbor of yours does fit the profile, which come to think of it. <laughs> you put hot sauce on your dessert. You know, actually, have you ever had jalapeno jelly? It's very tasty. Uh, you don't believe in monogamy, but you can... Uh, you're certain unicorns exist. Well, I know unicorns exist. It's called a rhino. Moving along. Um, let's see. Whatever you wish to believe, but the Aquarius full moon, total lunar eclipse, urges you to stop hiding the parts of yourself that might be quirky, eccentric, or just not in perfect harmony with the people around you. Wow, I have never been accused of hiding my quirky. <laughs> <laughs> or eccentric. Wow. Does that mean it, it's okay for me now? I have a free card? Sweet. I've been doing it already. Now, because Aquarian energy is all about live and let live, this full moon eclipse is great for authentic sharing without forcing your ideas on anyone else. And, you know, forcing ideas really doesn't do any good because either they're going to ignore you and think you're just a smart ass or they're going to bark back at you and dig their heels in because wow yeah your idea no can't go there this is my idea and you just back the hell off or you know just walk away but in any case you know if somebody's not ready to hear an idea they're not going to hear it Especially not the way you intend it. Doesn't make a damn bit of difference how many times you explain it to them. They're not going to hear it and understand it the way you intend it to be until they are ready to hear it. And then something will click. And then they will ask you more. But until then, you're just buttoned up against a brick wall. Doesn't do any good. Number two, allow for setbacks. So, uber rational... Aquarius is a master of emotional objectivity. Yes, my eldest daughter is. So where do you have your teeth and claws sunk in so deeply that you can't see the forest for the trees? Well, the Aquarius moon lunar eclipse is a great day to practice the Buddhist principle of non-attachment. Yes, you may want something with every fiber of your being. But do you also understand that if it doesn't happen, you'll still be okay? You know, with every fiber of my being, I want my house to be clean. But that implies that I have to do it. <laughs> and there's some days that I just plain can't go there. Just saying. So, do you also understand that if it doesn't happen, you'll still be okay? Yeah, I do. Because if it doesn't happen today, it'll happen tomorrow. And if I don't get it done today, then I've got tomorrow. And if I don't have tomorrow, someone else is going to have to do about it. So once again, why worry? So if you think you can't survive without a person or an outcome or whatever you're hooked into, this lunar light helps you release that fear. So let go. And the Aquarius full moon eclipse will bring a better long-term resolution to your issues. Yay! Thank you, Aquarius. See, it's the age of Aquarius. Okay, number three. Manifest your vision of utopia. So if you've got a radical idea, Aquarius is the star sign of the future and also rules science fiction, which I absolutely love science fiction. I'd say that's probably at least two thirds of all of the books I have. Now, it's the forward focused mad scientist who envisions a quirky idealized world or perhaps one populated by aliens, cyborgs, and a code of radical individualism. So consider what the perfect world would be like if you could create it. Well, my perfect world would be nobody would steal. If there was any lying, it was little white lies, because I know those do happen. 
and there would be no money, no monetary system, period. You wouldn't need a monetary system. And well, you know, you get away, you get rid of stealing and you get rid of all lies except for the little bitty white lies like, yeah, honey, that looks good. Let's go. We're late. Um, and you get rid of money that pretty much throws out government and religion and let's see, I'll think of something else <laughs> here in a minute. I'm sure I will. So yeah, that would be my utopian world. So self-governance, yes, causing no harm. Yes. Don't do unto anyone else what you would not want to have brought upon you. So, now that I've created it, what does it look like? And how can you bring a healthy drop of that into your daily life? I can do that. So, maybe it's time to tune, or maybe it's the tune of Burning Man. No, I don't like Burning Man. That That's just wrong. And where every day is a costume party and people share their talents, goods, and services without exchanging money. Okay, I get that. Sharing your talents, goods, and services without changing money. But, you know, the costume party, dress however you feel comfortable. Period. Uh, you might want to read up on some new age or shamanic ideas or even deepen your knowledge of astrology. All of the out there Aquarian themes. Well, you know, I do read up on a lot of those out there things. So, hmm. Number four, carry your own Olympic torch. Yeah, in other words, run your own race. Don't expect someone else to pick it up for you. There's no one else to pass that baton on to. Now, the Aquarius is the Zodiac's team player encouraging you to show pride for a group you belong to. Whether the activity you're involved in is sporty or stationary, wave the symbolic flag and wear the uniform. No, 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 no. can't do those. And But don't sit in the stands and be spectator style. Yeah, you do need to be involved. And the gold medal goes to those uh, who move their bodies. Yay! So Aquarius is all about kinetic energy. And this full moon is the perfect time to commit to a sports league, train for a 5K with a team, or attend a group fitness class. How about I just go out and play in my garden? I get lots of exercise doing that. The next two weeks are an especially rich time for jumping in with both sneakered feet. Summon your social network, getting your friends into, to, into the fitness groove along with you will keep you motivated. Well, hmm, some people may need that, but I'll, all I have to do is step outside and go, God dang, I just pulled weeds and I'm motivated. I start pulling weeds. So number five, host a high-minded workshop. Really? So, idealistic, intellectual Aquarius revels in the realm of cutting-edge ideas. And the Aquarius full moon lunar eclipse creates the perfect space for a workshop or salon. Now, gather your brain trust for a topic-centered discussion, potluck style if you can, and since, since group-centric Aquarius parties are even better when everyone contributes. So, yay! You might even screen a film like No Impact Man or watch a high-minded TED Talk or watch, you know, something to do with the red pill or the food and how you can grow your own. There you go. And uh, with the Aquarius full moon ruling the skies, the night could end with a plan for the new world order. Not, not the one that the leeches that be want, but the one that actually is beneficial for the individual. Although each one of those leeches is an individual, I get that, but let's, uh, let's make it to where it causes the least harm to the most individuals, okay? Because there really is no, no real scarcity in this world either. They've, they've pretty much proved that with the way they just print money right and left. We're just making it up. We're making this shit up. Yes, they are. Number six, geek out. The liberated Aquarius rules technology. So circle this full moon for spreading a message 
through social media and digital platforms. Ready for a job upgrade? The Aquarius Full Moon Eclipse prompts you to up your technical or yeah, technical know-how, and this full moon is a great time to launch an online marketing, crowdfunding, or social network campaigning. So ready, set, go viral. And actually, I have seen a few videos of late that made me go, hey, I can do that. And I can make money. Craft fairs. Yeah. And lastly, number seven, just breathe. So as any yogi will attest, there's nothing more centering than a deep inhalation of oxygen. Aquarius is an air sign, so breathe deep. Many of us won't take a sip of water that isn't filtered. So how about giving our air the same attention at the Aquarius full moon lunar eclipse? Plug in an air purifier, a deionizer, or a dehumidifier. Or try an essential oil mister for a fragrant and soothing blast, which I have my diffuser going every day. And the oils that go in it change just about every day. So just go easy on the patchouli. Yes, yes, go easy on the patchouli. But if you want to keep bugs out of your house, a few drops of patchouli along the threshold of your door. Yeah, they really don't care for that. And, <coughs> excuse me, a fan favorite of this Bohemian Aquarius full moon, yeah, is patchouli. But a strong whiff for the average sensory citizen. Yeah, it is. So grapefruit, lemon, tangerine, and other citrus oils are uplifting and energizing and perfect for the Aquarius mad scientist moments that could keep you up working on the master plan till the wee hours of the morning. You might also want to try eucalyptus or ginger or any of the mints, peppermint, spearmint, wintergreen. Mm-hmm. Those are also good for that. So, thank you, Astro Twins, for that. That was rather interesting. I indulged myself. Time to score some weed. There you go. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. What's that? Oh, <laughs> Oh, DC is now known as BLM Fluke. All righty. Catching up on the chat here. So. Oh, free and slave said Zeus and Apollo are wrestling outside. How fun. My two are just kind of running around side being Riri's. They really are goofy. Goofy, goofy, goofy. Okay. So. Now I want to get to, oh, wait, did I put that? Let me make sure I put that in the chat. Yes, I did. Okay, I need to put this on the FN site. And I need to save it to put on Fakiebook later, because I have some friends over on Fakiebook that would really appreciate that as well. So, uh, dun, 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 dun. I think I will do, let me do this one, and we'll do the guru guy. Yeah. Okay. Now, back to my pocket I go. So, this I saw on Instagram earlier today. And I thought, wow, that is really pretty cool. Um, Aiv Yavan, whoever that is, I don't know. It's someone that shows up on my Instagram feed every once in a while. And it's guru versus teacher. So the difference between a guru and a teacher is... And I thought these, I found these fascinating. A teacher takes responsibility for your growth, whereas a guru makes you responsible for your own growth. A teacher gives you things that you do not have and require. A guru takes away things that you have 
and do not require. A teacher answers your questions, whereas a guru questions your answers. A teacher requires obedience and discipline from the pupil, whereas a guru requires trust and humility from the pupil. A teacher clothes you and prepares you for the outer journey, whereas a guru strips you naked and prepares you for the inner journey. A teacher is a guide on the path, whereas a guru is a pointer to the way. A teacher sends you on the road to success, whereas a guru explains yourself and your nature to you. A teacher gives you knowledge and puncture or a teacher gives you knowledge and boosts your ego, whereas a guru takes away your knowledge and punctures your ego. A guru is very good at making you question everything you thought you knew. A teacher instructs you, whereas a guru constructs you. A teacher sharpens your mind and a guru opens your mind. A teacher reaches your mind. A guru touches your spirit. A teacher instructs you on how to solve problems, where a guru shows you how to resolve issues. A teacher is a systematic thinker, whereas a guru is a lateral thinker. And one can always find a teacher, but a guru has to find and accept you. Um, a teacher leads you by the hand, whereas a guru leads you by example. And a teacher finishes with you, or a teacher finishes with you, you celebrate. When a guru finishes with you, life celebrates. So let's honor both the teachers and the gurus in our lives because yes, they are both necessary, but yes, there are differences between them. And I'm going to go ahead and share this one as well. I just found that really interesting. Oh, sure, Meister Brow's making a margarita and not sharing with the rest of the class. See how you are. Uh, anti, the eclipse was visible in India, from what I understood. It would have, if it was visible in Russia, it would have been way southern parts of Russia, but in definitely in India, from what I checked. So, um, what? Oh, wow. Okay, let me put this over on the effing site as well. I figured, you know, since I was going all astrological, I may as well get a little metaphysical with you as well. So, we'll do this one. Okay, now, back to my pocket I go, because I actually did put some stuff in my pocket over the last few days. So, I uh, did that one. Um... I also found a uh, herbalist mini course. I don't remember who it was that shared it, but it was like, oh, that is just so freaking way cool. So yes, I am going to, I am going to take that herbalist mini course. It's the herbalacademy.com. Now, the next one is about plants. Did you know, and this is from August of 2016, so it's a, a couple years old, but there's still plants, so I don't see why they wouldn't wake. From papershreddernews.com, the seven plants that you need to absorb radiation from computers. Now, these following plants that office people should not ignore will be useful in preventing you from fatigue, stress, headaches, eye aches, dry skin when using computers constantly. And I've just got to tell you, I've got several of these plants in my house. So, 
Number one is the cactus. Cactus is one of the most popular succulents thanks to its easy growth that does not require too much care. And furthermore, putting cactus on the desk or in the room helps absorb radiation from the computer. Number two is the beetle leaf plant, which I have one of those hanging by my southwest window. The beetle leaf plant, or piper beetle, is the, um, is the leaf of a grapevine which belongs to the family of pipe, yeah, it belongs to that family. And it includes pepper and kava and is one of the trees that absorb harmful gases strongly. It is completely appropriate to place on a desk because of its petite and lovely beauty and freshness. And moreover, it can absorb the rays admitted from the computer. So, <coughs> excuse me. Number three is the snake plant. And the snake plant, also known as, yeah, Sansevieria, I'm sure I butchered that one, is one of the trees whose leaves can absorb harmful radiation from the computers. So the snake plant is also the tree decoration preference in an office where computers exist. And the snake plant can be grown in pots in the, on the office desk, including in mosaics and in ceramic pots. So it is very easy to grow. Spider plants are number four. And they can be, um, let's see, it has the official name there, but I'm not even going to, because that's like 25 letters. <clears throat> In any case, um, it's also known with the other name as an airplane plant, and it's the kind of succulent that has the ability to absorb the huge pollution and clean out the harmful gases in the home for a short time. Now, the spider plant can metabolize the cancer-causing gas in the air, such as... Um, aldehyde formic acid and turn them into sugar and ammonia. So to decorate in your office, you can design it um, into various kinds of pots. And yes, I don't have a spider plant anymore. I think that that's in at the farmer's son's house. Aloe. I have a massive aloe. Massive aloe that I need to repot lots and lots of it and send it to friends and family. But <clears throat> aloe is number five, and the body of this plant does not strongly develop, but the leaves are um, extremely flourish, and the leaves are very thin and contain a lot of water. Now, like many other succulents, aloe is very compact, meaning it has a pretty small size. If you don't overwater it, <laughs> if you water it a lot, it will get bigger, and you will have to transplant and transplant. Trust me. So, you can put it anywhere, such as desks or on a vanity desk and so on. Now, in terms of, of its usefulness, aloe has the surprising ability to kill microorganisms in the air. It also absorbs odors and even freshens the air. In addition, aloe has side benefits to relieve pain, itching, and swelling. So, you just need to rub the aloe gel into the wound like when you have a mosquito bite or other insect bites, and it also works on burns as well. But careful, because if you have a bad enough burn, don't put aloe on it. You really need, need to go see, go see someone about that. Depends on how bad the burn is. Now, number six is Narcissus, which that is a very pretty little plant. It's a member of plants in the Amarilla Decia family, whatever that is, that mostly lasts in the spring. Now, the Narcissus flower is also the perfect choice for computer radiation absorption. And besides, this flower is amazingly so beautiful, so it's definitely essential for both decoration and health. And it is a pretty little flower. And number seven is the lotus flower, which is also a succulent. And my mother has a lot of that that I'm going to swipe some. So, placing a small stone lotus flower pot on your desk is also one of the optimal options for preventing radiation from emitting. This plant can also better absorb radiation emitted from a computer. And what's more fascinating about this is that it doesn't need any complex care. 
and it does not require extreme light or water, so you can simply water it once every two days and place everywhere you like, or actually you don't even have to water it that often. So, these plants surely can absorb the radiation from computers that you have to use the whole day at work, and more importantly, it can also help calm your mind and release stress at work. I've also experienced several ways to reduce stress at work, and I'm pretty sure that these will work pretty well. So, um, let's see. Also, it goes on to say to keep your eyes almost six hours of your work time stare at the laptop. Yeah, it's time to step away. So, go ahead and share this one as well. What is that going on over here in the chat? chat? Okay. Don't be telling Narcissus it's pretty. Oh, sorry. That's true. It will, yeah. But the little plant is very pretty, Grim. So, let me see what's going on in the other chat. Okay. Dun dun dun. Now, back to my pocket I go. Because I think that one is really cool too. Also, um, let's see. Peace lilies are very good at absorbing. Um, but they're, they're a little bit bigger. Um, so that might be something that not necessarily sitting on your desk. But you can have in your office space. So... But they are very good at absorbing pollution in indoor pollution. So, come on. The effing sight is making me stop and think. Darn it. Gosnell, whatever that is. Oh, hey. Truth or UFO, of, I just checked Twitter because I had lots and lots of notifications. And Truth or UFO just shared this. Um, July 27th and 28th, major energy shift. Energy is currently supercharged as we approach the full moon total eclipse and six planets in retrograde. Mars appearing as big as the moon and intense geomagnetic storms. So... If you can't think straight, if your ears are ringing, if your head is buzzing, you're struggling to communicate with people and feel irritable or angry or argumentative or zoned out or zapped of energy and are struggling to sleep, you're perfectly okay. You're just highly attuned to the universe and are going through a huge personal shift that will feel brutal but will push you through an extreme and much needed transformation. So, we're about to experience the longest eclipse of the entire century and at the same time, which that sounds really, the entire century, all 18 years, and at the same time go through the fastest, most powerful and turbulent life changes. It is highly recommended to take time out as often as possible over the next few days and to quickly remove yourself from any situation that could potentially become explosive. In other words, if someone starts baiting you, especially in chats or on the internet or, or in person, sometimes the better part of valor, valor is to say, if it comforts you to think that way and turn and walk away. Works for me, some most of the time, every once in a while, it doesn't and then I have to just kind of do a slam dunk on them and then I still walk away so uh, we will notice our past coming back to test us and the decisions that we make over this period will either show how much we have grown or how we are still stuck repeating the same dramas and maintaining ties that we know we should have cut some time ago this is our opportunity to prove to ourselves that we've learned from heartbreaking mistakes and we're no longer afraid to end what is harmful and open up to new beginnings that hold life-changing possibilities. 
So drink plenty of water, take salt baths, which I plan on having a nice Epsom salt soak after the radio, walk barefoot in nature, which I do every day, take time out alone, I have lots of that as well, unless you count the doggies, and mostly deep breaths and count to 10 regularly. So, excellent advice. Excellent. And I'm going to retweet that as well. So, let me put this over here in the chat. There's Rob Works. I see him. Thank you for firing up the bubbler, hon. Is my fan? Yes, it is. I need to turn my fan because it's getting a little bit warm. And I'm not sure it's getting muggy is what it's doing. Because the rain's moving in. Oh. <laughs> Woody, you're a goof. Okay. Oh, Louis Blue Raspberry Margaritas. Meister Brower, you're just not nice at all. Damn it. I want a margarita. A margarita. Damn it. And fluke beft. Beft it. Okay. Back to my pocket I go. Seeing as how I got distracted. I know. It happens. So. Oh, let me put this over here as well. Wait. Come on. Put the paper shredder on there. Yes, Rob. Mmm. Okay. Well, it doesn't wish to process the plants over here on this effing site. So, damn it. I'll just go back to my pocket. So, da 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 da. How about. Um, wow. Okay, I can't decide. Mmm. How about I go with the magic mushrooms? <laughs> I'll go with the shrooms. That sounds like a hell of a plan to me. So, this is from Medical News Today. And it was posted in January of this year. Magic mushrooms treating depression without dulling emotions. Now, I don't know if I've, d I don't think I've done this article, but I have done something along these lines in the last few months, so. There's two new studies that confirm the hypothesis that the psychoactive compound found in magic mushrooms may be a useful new treatment for depression and avoiding some of the side effects of the conventional antidepressants, you know, like feeling suicidal. That's a hell of a side effect. So at the Medical News Today, we have reported on a range of studies that pointed to psilocybin, the psychoactive substance in magic, magic mushrooms, as a potential remedy for depression. Now, two such studies showed that the psychoactive compound can reduce feelings of anxiety and depression in people with advanced cancer, while another small trial suggests that the compound could succeed where previous depression treatments has failed. So basically, they're going to put you on the conventional shit first and then give you the magic mushrooms to make you feel better about the way they screwed you up in the first place. So treating depression can be challenging not only because some depression types are treatment resistant, but also because existing therapies have a range of unwanted side effects. Uh -huh. So one such adverse effect frequently reported by people living with depression is the emotional blunting or indifference or apathy that comes with taking antidepressants. And a new study, which was carried out by researchers at the Imperial College of London in the UK, suggests that magic mushrooms could treat depression while avoiding these side effects. I'd volunteer. Oh, I'm already happy. Never mind. So the new research consists of two studies. 
both of which were led by Lear or yeah, Lior Roseman, who is a member of the psychedelic research group at ICL, which is the Imperial College of London. Now participants felt emotionally reconnected while they participated in this. In the first study published in the journal Neuropharmacology, 20 people diagnosed with moderate to severe depression that conventional treatment had not alleviated participated in two dosing sessions with magic mushroom compound. Now using functional MRI, the team scanned the brains of the participants while they looked at pictures of emotive expressions and the scans were taken before and after each drug intervention. Now in order to assess the impact of the treatment on depression, the subjects were all provided with psychological or yeah, psychological support before, during, and after the intervention. After the treatment, the participates, participants reported feeling better emotionally re reconnected and accepting. Cool. And the functional MRI or fMRI scans also revealed a stronger brain response to emotive faces. Specifically, the scientists saw more activity in the brain's amygdala, which is an emotional processing area associated with depression. And the authors explained that based on present results, we propose that psilocybin with psychological support and a treatment approach that potentially revives emotional responsiveness in depression and enabling patients to reconnect with their emotions. Roseman comments on the new findings, saying that they are important as they reveal biological changes after psilocybin therapy. And more specifically, they suggest that increased emotional processing is crucial for the treatment to work. Which, yes, <clears throat> just taking medication is not going to fix your depression. You have to get to the root of the problem, and sometimes the root of the problem is emotional damage. Sometimes it's damage you did to yourself, but more often than not, it's damage that others have inflicted upon you. So, the authors also caution that more research is needed to establish firmly whether the positive effects were due to the psychoactive compound itself, or the psychological counseling, or the interruption of the antidepressant treatments that the subjects had been on before the study. <coughs> Excuse me, how about a combination of all three? Because it's never just one thing. It's usually a com if you really look at it, it's usually a combination of things that actually make things work. So, having a healthy control group in future studies should be helpful in answering some of these questions, Roseman admits. Okay, healthy control group, I got my hand raised. <laughs> Now, the second paper, published in the journal Frontiers in Pharmacology, examined whether or not the quality of the psychedelic experience was linked with the, su the success of its treatment. Roseman and colleagues gave questionnaires to another group of 20 volunteers who underwent two treatment sessions with psilocybin. Now, the researchers looked at the so-called feeling of oceanic boundlessness which is a mystical type experience involving feelings of unity and a lack of boundaries between the self and the universe. And the study revealed that, <clears throat> excuse me, the more strongly the participants felt this experience, the better was their mental health in the long term. So depressive symptoms subsided and the mental benefits lasted for weeks after the treatment in participants who reported a strong mystical experience. Now, future therapeutic work with psychedelics may consider investigating ways which enhance mystical type experience and reduce anxiety. Given the growing evidence that this serves the efficacy of the treatment model, and yeah, that would be, I, I, once again, I'm raising my hand. So the researchers are planning on carrying out larger trials 
with a healthy control group in which the effects of psilocybin could be compared with an existing antidepressant. I won't take an existing antidepressant if I have to do that in order to participate in your trial. Sorry. We also want to investigate how the amygdala responds a, a longer time after treatment, Roseman adds, which will inform us about longer term effects. Compared to the first study, which was only looked at a day after the therapy. Now, additionally, in light of the findings of the second study, the group recommends that future trials with psychedelics should aim to enhance the mystical aspect of the experience. Once again, they're focusing on just one part. But if I don't have to take conventional antidepressants depressants in order to participate in your study, I'm a healthy test subject. <laughs> I would, honest, and I would report on the rocket chair at how I'm feeling. You may not notice much, but hey. Uh, da -da. What's that? Catching up here. So, let me put this one over here on the FN site, see if it will go. Maybe it was just that paper shredder link that did not wish to work. Could quite, yep, it was. Okay, we need to do the guru guy again. And ever so happy. And suave. And oh, we can do the little flying one too. Okay. So. Back to my pocket. Now that I've see when you when I put so darn much stuff in my pocket that I really want to check out, that's when it's like, wow. Okay. How about from humans are free? Just to kind of let you know, because you know all these pharmacological things and everything. Yeah. It's a really big club and you ain't in it. Thanks, George. From Humans Are Free, the CDC owns over 20 vaccine patents and transacts 4.1 billion with a B. That's 4,001, yeah, 100 million dollars or 4,100 million dollars. Yeah. 4.1 billion. That's a lot. That's a lot of zeros. They make that in vaccines annually. That's the CDC, a government agency. If they make that kind of money, they should be able to fund the rest of the damn government. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. So, um, what do you and the World Mercury Project team hope to accomplish? This is a question by R.S., which I have no, not real sure who, <clears throat> who R.S. is. But JFK Jr. responds, Our ultimate goal is to get mercury and other metals out of vaccines and medical products, including dental amalgams. We also aim to reduce or eliminate other mercury exposures from industry, mining, energy production, and consumer products. We want safe vaccines, robust, transparent science, and an honest and independent regulatory agency focused narrowly on public health rather than industry profit. So when he was asked, how do you hope to advance this strategically? RFK Jr. said, our immediate efforts center on forcing a debate in the press, making reporters actually look at the science and realize they've been lied to and bamboozled by hucksters at the CDC. Oh, sweetheart, once again, you are not going to force them into anything. If they aren't ready for it or they don't want to, you ain't going to force them. So then he was asked, what would be the cost of switching to non-thimerosal vaccines, which I still wouldn't want to vaccinate my children if I had to worry about it. But 
um, RFK Jr. said that he has seen industry estimates of 20 cents per vaccine, which is a relatively trivial price. But Professor Jose Doria just published a peer-reviewed um, answer to the question in a November issue of Environmental Research, and he estimates the cost at less than one cent per vaccine. So the total global cost would be less than two million annually for vaccines for 100 million children currently receiving thimerosal containing vaccines. And that's less than the lifetime cost of caring for a single child with autism. The industry already produces non-thimerosal versions of all of these vaccines. So the switch would be quick. Now this does go on. It is basically a question and answer thing. And uh, I do want to go to this one. Um, they've... RS asks, I've heard talk about captive regulatory agencies, so do you mean the CDC? To which RFK reply, replied, the CDC is a subsidiary of the pharmaceutical industry. The agency owns more than 20 vaccine patents and purchases and sells 4.1 billion in vaccines annually. Now, Congressman Dave Weldon has pointed out that the primary metric for success across the CDC is how many vaccines the agency sells and how successfully the agency expands the vaccine program, regardless of any negative effects on human health. Weldon exposed how the Immunization Safety Office, which is supposed to ensure vaccine efficacy and safety, has become subsumed in that met uh, metric. And the scientists in that part of the agency should no longer be considered part of the public safety sector. Their function is to promote vaccines. And as Dr. Thompson has attested, they are routinely ordered to destroy, manipulate, and conceal evidence of adverse vaccine reactions in order to protect the ultimate metric the CDC should not be the agency that we are relying on for oversight of the vaccine program. It's the hen guarding the wolf house. It's not just the CDC. Virtually all the institutions that are supposed to stand between a rapacious industry and vulnerable children have been compromised. And when asked which ones those are, JF or RFK Jr. said Congress, the regulatory agencies, FDA, CDC, the o IOM, the NIH, the AAP, the science journals, the university science departments, and the press. Because Big Pharma has a broad reach. Now there is more to this interview, but I'm going to go ahead and let you guys read it on your own because I have another one about vaccines that I want to get to. And how they are having a damn good time at our expense. And it's just plain infuriating. So... Okay. This is also from Humans Are Free. And let's see. The USA has the highest vaccination rate in the world and has the worst health. And <clears throat> That label includes a ranking of 34th in the world with infant mortality. So, in other words, the USA has the 34th worst infant survival with its highest rate of vaccinations. Now, some are directly from multiple vaccinations administered, but the USA leads the world in infant vaccinations. And those administered during the first year after their birth 26 vaccinations during that time. 
Now, the only vaccination that this author recalled receiving during early childhood, which was circa 1948, which is way before me, was the smallpox vaccine, the one that left a little circle of a shallow pockmark on the upper arm. It's a non-ink tattoo that proved you had received the vaccine. And, you know, some of the stuff that I've been reading, that was, yeah. So, months later, there was a booster shot which gave me a vacation for several days away from my first grade teacher while sitting out the chicken pox. Now, during naval training, the mass vaccination, high-pressure, handheld gun that replaced syringes and needles was tried on us with the polio shot. I wound up with a vacation in the base infirmary with an extended period of the flu. Between those two, there may have been a tetanus shot or two. Now from the Healthy Home Economist, in 1950 there were three childhood vaccines typically given when a child entered school. In 1983 there were 10 recommended vaccines by the age of 6 years old. 24 doses, 7 injections, 4 oral doses of polio. Which, yeah. Mm -hmm. In 2010, the CDC VAX schedule totaled 68 doses, with more than half given by the time the child was only a year and a half old. In 2016, the schedule has increased to 74 doses by age 17, with 53 injections and three oral doses of rotavirus. So your child is a walking, talking pin cushion by that time now. Now the number of vaccines included in the current childhood vaccine schedule has quadrupled over the past 60 years, with several demanding multiple injections and boosters. During this exponential rise of CDC recommended schedules, the health of American children has plummeted. Autoimmune diseases, learning disabilities, food allergies, chronic ailments, and childhood obesity have all risen. The overall health of the nation ranks very low compared to all other industrialized nations and dead last in most areas. The vaccine false dogma is so heavy, hardly anyone with authority, even in mainstream media, makes a connection between poor health with high vaccination rates. Instead, three more were added in 2016 and are getting enforced by mandate or coerced by pediatricians who have the right to refuse medical care on children who aren't vaccinated. But destroying health with vaccines is good business. And a quote from Dr. Jack Wolfson, To all the pediatricians in the world, please show me the study that found 69 doses of 16 vaccines do not cause cancer, autoimmune disease, and brain injury. Thank you, Dr. Jack Wolfson. In 1986, after the uh, swine flu shot debacle of 1976, uh, pharmaceutical companies lobbied and helped write the legislation that guaranteed that they couldn't get sued for vaccine adverse effects, damages, and deaths. The legislation created the vaccine court, where vaccine damages would be compensated to parents of vaccine-injured children if they could prove the injuries were vaccine caused, which requires a doctor on your side. <laughs> Good luck with that. It's a cumbersome system set up outside of the tort court system without juries of peers, and it's to determine who gets settlements supplied by surcharge taxes on vaccines sold. So we have large sociopathic pharmaceutical companies making big bucks from worthless protections against minor diseases, which often ca um, create collateral damage that's considered worth, worth the greater good of herd immunity. And it's all nonsense, but it's a great business profit-oriented model. And the trail of worsened health among children 
lines up even more business for pharmaceutical companies and the academic sociopaths that benefit from the checkbook research. That is getting the results Big Pharma wants for getting their toxic solutions to market. That was by Paul Fassa. So thank you, Paul, for writing that. Yeah, it's bad juju. What are you guys talking about with Pelosi? Okay. What is that that you shared, Grimmy? Huh. Oh, wow, that is so true. Yeah, outlaw the straws. That'll keep it. That'll stop it from happening. Okay. Let me put this one over here on this F in sight as well. I'm going to have a lot of links today, I think. Or maybe not. Dang, I didn't realize how late it was getting. Um, let's see. Do that one. And do that one. Because they're all evil. Evil, evil, evil. Okay. Back to my pocket. Now, one more. Just to, you know, get the evil shit out of the way. And then I'll get to a good one. Actually, I'll go check out the pig and then I'll do a good one. So this is from the naturalblaze.com from yesterday. Gates Foundation, helping government dictate how much vitamin C you can take. Single finger salute, please. Yes, you got it from both hands there, dude. The draconian limits on vitamin dosage amounts could be coming if the Fed gets their way. So, that bottle of 50,000 IU or 5,000 IU or even a measly 1,000 IU, which is international units, in your medicine cabinet could soon be contraband. Important entities are meeting to discuss how to restrict the kinds of supplements you take under the guise of harmonization of supplement standards. So if you're allowed to move forward, it's possible that the federal government could adopt restrictions on vitamin doses that can be legally sold, as Europe has already done. And this is at the request of Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, double whammy, and the National Academy of Sciences, or NAS, and recently they convened a workshop to assess methodological approaches that could be applied uniformly across countries in setting nutrient intake recommendations, with particular attention on how standards could be set for population subgroups such as young children and women of reproductive age, you know, the ones that they're really seriously targeting. Nutrient intake recommendations include upper levels of intake, which are used to restrict the vitamin dose that a supplement can contain. Now, this workshop is another in a series of meetings that NAS is involved in with other entities, including the World Health Organization and United Nations, who are both sponsors of Codex, to discuss limits on vitamin doses. So as we reported previously, Codex is an intergovernmental body whose goal is to establish international standards regarding food safety and food ingredients with the goal of promoting, so they say, fair trade practices and consumer protections. Codex standards on supplements, however, are widely expected to follow Europe's draconian restrictions, where selenium, for example, is limited in supplement form to that found in one-third of a Brazil nut. Are you nuts? Selenium is a key ingredient to help women prevent any kind of issues with breast cancer. 
It's a key component for women. And stay away from the damn mammography shit, too, while you're at it. Um, It's extremely concerning that NAS is working to establish upper limits for supplements on multiple fronts. Now, to be clear, NAS cannot create standards. They merely make recommendations. But government bodies listen closely to NAS... And, as we discussed in previous articles, it isn't clear whether the FDA can ban therapeutic supplement doses on its own without public involvement. Why not? They ban all kinds of other shit. So, if the agency decides, following recommendations from NAS, that vitamin D, for example, over a certain amount presents a significant or unreasonable risk of illness or injury. And that's the legal definition of an adulterated supplement. And the FDA may be able to ban it. Fuck you who? Oh, F-bomb. And the agency recently placed restrictions on certain bulk caffeine products along similar, similar lines, so the path seems open for similar actions against other products. What's that? Once they regulate limits on doses, it can no longer be called. That is true, Grim. It can't be called a recommendation anymore if there's a limitation on it. So, take six minutes to rate your thinking. Of additional concern is that the NAS has proven that it does not understand the science of supplements. Recall that their experts recommended that adults ingest 600 IU of vitamin D each day, and they established an upper limit, which is the level above which supposedly poses a danger to adults, of 4,000 IU. Now, any real experts will tell you this is nonsense. The Vitamin D Council recommends 5,000 IU of vitamin D for adults, And it's not uncommon uh, for an integrative physician to recommend higher levels when needed. For this reason, we don't want NAS anywhere near a discussion that could lead to supplement restrictions. So what the NAS, Codex, and European authorities don't seem to understand is that to gain the benefits or the beneficial effects of certain vitamins... They must, at times, be taken in therapeutic doses. So consider vitamin C. Research has indicated that therapeutic doses of vitamin C impart many benefits. And students who supplement with hourly doses, excuse me, of 1,000 milligrams of vitamin C for six hours and then three times daily, afterwards exhibited an 85% decrease in cold and flu symptoms compared to those who took decongestants. Therapeutic vitamin C regimes also have heart protective benefits, including reducing damage caused by heart attacks and lowering coronary heart disease risk. For comparison, The safe, quote-unquote, upper limit set by NAS for vitamin C is 2,000 milligrams. Note that the upper levels currently set by the NAS are meant to serve merely as a guide. They're not binding. So, in the past, NAS has studied and published upper limits for a handful of vitamins and minerals mostly for educational purposes, so they say. Repeat a lie often enough and loud enough. Our concern is now that the NAS is increasingly meeting and consulting with governmental bodies from other countries who've been responsible for setting upper limits and then banning supplements above those limits, as the European Union has done. So will the U.S. head down the same road? Well, it's unclear as of yet, but these recent developments are not encouraging. So compared to other parts of the world, the U.S. enjoys relative freedom in our choices regarding the therapeutic dose of supplements. So we must act now 
in the initial stages of the multiple processes underway at NAS to make sure it stays that way, that we have the freedom. So write to Congress and the FDA that will not do a damn bit of good. Stop supporting Bill and Melinda Gates. That might help. Stop buying shit. Stop supporting that system completely. Seriously. If you wish a system to go away, stop supporting and it will starve to death. Uh, I've seen some of those recommendations as well. And then you look at look up the other, the actual in health publications, not just this shit, but actually in health publications. And yeah, you find out that no, somebody's full of shite. Lots and lots of it, as a matter of fact. So... Now, let me go check out the pig, because I need to know what happened this date in history. Because we already have a very historic day, because it was a full moon and a blood moon and a total lunar eclipse with Mars at its closest this century in the last 18 years. They always, it always sounds so much bigger when you say this century as opposed to in the last 18 years. So the word of the day over on the pig is gratitude. It's the feeling we here at the Free State of Pig frequently experience every time we pause and remind ourselves that some awesome kick-ass country we live in. Okay, guys, have you already done that? Or is that the word of the day again? No, this is for Friday. In their quotable quotes section, voting for America is like playing country music backwards, or voting for Trump is like playing country music backwards. You get your house back, your car back, your job back, your country back. That's from Charlie Daniels. Okay, Charlie. And the devil went down to Georgia. He was looking for a soul to steal. So, want some very strange facts? Proof that the world is nuts. In Lebanon, men are legally allowed to have sex with animals. But the animals must be female. Having sexual relations with a male animal is punishable by death. In Bahrain, a male doctor may legally examine a woman's genitals, but is prohibited from looking directly at them during the examination. He may only see their reflection in a mirror. Muslims are banned from looking at the genitals of a corpse. This also applies to undertakers, and the sex organs of the deceased must be covered with a brick or piece of wood at all times. These are very strange facts indeed. The penalty for masturbation in Indonesia is decapitation. Whoa! Whoa! Wow! That's... Wow! <laughs> that is... Yeah, right guys, that is much worse than going blind. Um... Also, there are men in Guam whose full-time job is to travel the countryside and deflower young virgins who pay them for the privilege of having sex for the first time. The reason? Under Guam law, it is expressly forbidden for virgins to marry. Now let's think for just a minute. Is there any job elsewhere in the world that even comes close to that? I don't know of any of you guys that, well, maybe a few of you guys would probably volunteer for that. I don't know. Did you know that in Hong Kong, a betrayed wife is legally allowed to kill her adulterous husband, but may only do so with her bare hands? The husband's illicit lover, on the other hand, may be killed in any manner desired. <laughs> All righty. Also, topless saleswomen are legal in Liverpool, England, but only in tropical fish stores. Alrighty then. Did you know in Cali, Colombia, a woman may only have sex with her husband, and the first time this happens, her mother must be in the room to witness the act. Wow. 
Wow. <laughs> no. I'm so glad I don't live there. Um, in Santa Cruz, Bolivia, it is illegal for a man to have sex with a woman and her daughter at the same time. Presumably, someone had the huevos enough to do that, and it didn't turn out well, and so therefore they had to pass a law. Wow. In Maryland, it is illegal to sell condoms from vending machines with one exception. Condoms may be dispensed from a vending machine only in places where alcoholic beverages are sold for consumption on the premises. Well, it is, yeah, it's pretty cool, but not as great as Guam. Yeah, I see, I see where you're going, guys. So, did you know that banging your head against a wall uses 150 calories an hour? I wonder who volunteered for that one so that they could find out. Did you know that the ant can lift 50 times its own weight, can pull 30 times its own weight, and always falls over on its right side when it intoxicated? Who got the ant drunk? <laughs> and how did they know? Did they? Wow. Also, did you know, that's probably government research money, by the way, your tax dollars at work. Did you know that butterflies taste with their feet? I did know that. So when you have a butterfly land on you and it's walking around, it's tasting you. <laughs> did you know that an ostrich's eye is bigger than its brain? There's a few people that I think I could probably refer to as ostriches. Did you also know that starfish don't have brains? Uh, I did not know that. And, saving the best for last, did you know that turtles can breathe through their ass? Huh. Wow. <laughs> wow. Okay. So, um, also, the last little did you knows. Did you know that 63 Earths can fit inside Uranus? Wow. My ass is not that big. <laughs> oh, and then it goes on to say 64 if you relax. <laughs> you guys are sick and wrong. Okay, so this date in history, the 27th of July, 1586. Smoke em if you got em. Sir Walter Raleigh brings first load of tobacco to England from Virginia. And they've been token ever since. This date in history, the 27th of July, 1890. Artist Vincent Van Gogh eats gun for his last meal, dies two days later. Aw, dang it. And finally, this date in history, the 27th of July, 1940. Bugs Bunny, created by Warner Brothers and Tex Avery, debuts in Wild Hair. Hmm... So, if you want to know anything more that, you know, a lot of it's just nonsensical silliness that will either give you a giggle or a smirk or possibly even piss you off, come on come on over to PIGazette.com. Say hey to Hambo and Porkus for me. Tell them Grammy says hi to. Watch them quiver. They might even pee themselves. You never know. So, back to my pocket... I go, because I do have another one that is a feel-good. It's awesome, I think, or at least the headline is awesome. So, um, from thefreshtoast.com, not French, which is what I saw the first time I saw this, it's fresh. Did you know that medical marijuana protects against strokes? And research suggests that marijuana reduces the risk of blood clots as well. So, strokes kill 140,000 Americans each year, and nearly 800,000 suffer from an attack. But a promising study suggests that cannabis may lower a person's risk of having a stroke. The research conducted at the Center for Brain Health at the University of Texas and published in the journal Neuropsychopharmacology found marijuana improves oxygen and blood flow to the brain, reducing the risk of clots, 
that cause a brain attack. Brain attack. I thought that was a brain fart. Okay. So Dr. Francesca Philby, the lead researcher and her team have discovered that the primary psychoactive ingredient present in cannabis, THC, relaxes arterial walls resulting in lower blood pressure and increased blood flow to tissues. The research team also claimed that frequent cannabis consumers have the lowest risk for stroke because of their extremely efficient brain blood flow. Wow, dude, you must be like totally smart too then. So, while the reason for the brain changes related to chronic marijuana use is unclear, Philby said that these changes may reflect underlying differences in brain tissue metabolic rate. So past marijuana research has shown changes in uh, cognitive functions such as memory and executive functioning and our study seeks to understand the possible neuropsychological mechanisms that may drive these cognitive changes. Um, this was also said by Philby who is also Bert Moore chair at the Brain Health and head of the cognitive neuroscience program at the School of Behavioral and Brain Sciences. Now, the study consisted of 74 cannabis users and 101 non-users matched for age and IQ. All users reported at least 5,000 usages over their lifetime and daily use for 60 days leading up to the study. Now, participants were required to refrain from cannabis for 74 hours before the study to eliminate acute effects of the drug. Participants when underwent magnetic resonance imaging and THC metabolite levels were measured during urinalysis. Uh, uro, yeah, spit it out, Grams. Now, Philby and her team found that cannabis users showed higher global oxygen extraction fraction and cerebral metabolic rate of oxygen compared to non-users. Also, Blood flow in the putamen. Where, where's the putamen? Oh, it's an area of the brain associated with reward learning and habit forming. Ah, I have a putamen in my brain. <laughs> I didn't know that. And it was found to be greater in users than in non-users. Cool. So, increased blood flow in the putamen may either reflect the capacity of THC to dilate blood vessels or the development of additional circulatory pathways. Currently, cannabis is the most widely used illicit drug, and as it becomes more widely legalized, understanding neuropsychological alterations and its effects on the brain's health and performance are becoming increasingly relevant. Cool! I did not know that. I wonder if I could get my mom to do CBD oil. <laughs> but it's the THC that does it. Okay. Do what? Gary Johnson again. Gary. Just quit already. Jeez, dude. Okay, where did my pocket go? There it is. Holy crap, I've opened a lot of pocket stories. Couple minutes yet. Let me see. Where do I want to go? Hmm. Nope, I've been to those. Okay, this one looks funny. If for no other reason, it looks funny. At least the headline made me giggle. So, this is from madnesshub.com. Lesbian feminist transitions to male, then gets accused of mansplaining and heterosexual privilege. <laughs> you just can't win for losing, dude, dudette, whatever you are. So, Xander Keeg was an outspoken radical feminist prior to transitioning into a male. 
and spoke up often, loudly, and with confidence. Then Keeg uh, made the transition, and life hasn't always been easy being seen as a male. So when I speak up now, I am often given the direct or indirect message that I'm mansplaining, taking up too much space, or asserting my white male heterosexual privilege. Hmm, never mind that I am a first-generation Mexican-American, a transsexual man, and married to the same woman I was with prior to my transition. Keeg, who is a Coast Guard veteran and now a licensed clinical social worker at the Naval Medical Center in San Diego, told the Post that, uh, told the Washington Post, by the way, that workplace suggestions that angry or violent male patients were suffering from trauma or depression were often dismissed or outright challenged. The overarching theme was men are violent and there was no excuse for their actions. Still, as a transgender male, Keek noted to the paper that the assertion that I am now unable to speak out on issues I find important is offensive and I refuse to allow anyone to silence me. I was put off by the way that some women want to be treated by me. I do notice that some women do expect me to acquiesce or concede to them more now. Let them speak first, let them board the bus first, let them sit down first, and so on. I also notice that in public spaces, men are more um, collegial okay, with me, and which they express through the verbal and nonverbal messages head lifting when passing me on the sidewalk and using terms like brother or boss man to acknowledge me. Now, as a former lesbian feminist, I was put off by the way that some women want to be treated by me. Now that I'm a man, because it violates a foundational belief I carry, which is that women are fully capable human beings who do not need men to acquiesce or concede to them. There was a significant reduction in friendliness and kindness now extended to me in public spaces. Imagine that. Keek added to the paper that there has been a sig... Or, okay, he already said that. And it now feels as though I am on my own. No one outside of family and close friends is paying any attention to my well-being. So then a few years ago, Keek's transition came... Um, into his transition came a ride on a bus during which the difference hit home. Keeg said that there were six people on the bus, including me. One was a woman, and she was talking on a mobile phone very loudly and remarked that men are such assholes. I immediately looked up at her and then around at the other men. Not one had lifted his head to look at the woman or anyone else. Then the woman looked at Keeg and commented to the person that she was speaking with about some a-hole on the bus right now looking at me. I was stunned because I recall being in similar situations but in the reverse and many times a man or, would say or do something deemed obnoxious or offensive and I would find solidarity with the women around me as we made eye contact, rolled our eyes, or maybe even commented out loud on the situation. I'm not sure I understand why the men did not respond, but it made a lasting impression on me. Yeah. Apparently he's loving being a man, but not so much liking the being on the receiving end of the feminazi shit. So, go figure. Okay, it's getting close to the end. So y'all been listening to Grammy's Rocket Chair here on RealLibertyMedia.com, Channel 10. Grammy says it's still also on Channel 3. Um, also on the RLM Spreaker channel. Uh, is there going to be a dork table tomorrow? I don't know. And is it going to be Freaker's Ball tonight? Once again, I do not know. Grammy, 
I know we've got a little pause here, so while you're doing that. Um, but on Sunday, I do know Grimner at noon Eastern Time was gonna ju- is going to jump on and play the Blues, and there will probably be a rousing game of trivia going on in the chat. Directly following Grim will be Hal Anthony, who's going to open up a can of whoop-ass on yo ass behind the woodshed. Who's full of Looney Tunes? I'm full of Looney Tunes? Yes, I'm full of Looney Tunes. Who are you talking about? Cort- oh, Cortez. Okay. I do believe this evening, Grimner or Grimner and Moosey will be on with the Freaker's Ball or Balls to the Wall, however you want to look at that. It will be at 11 o'clock Eastern Time, 10 o'clock Mine Time, Central Time, set with the Cosmos, however you want to put that. But um, I will be back Wednesday for the Wackadoodle Wednesday edition of the Rocket Chair. And then I will be taking next week Friday off because I can. Because it's my birthday and I will be with my kids and my grandkids. So, let me see. Dang, I went through that entirely too fast. So, back to my pocket I go. What's that, Grim? Oh, no dork table tomorrow, but tonight should be Freakers. Oh, that's right, yeah. Vinny doesn't have his interwebs yet. So, thank you, Grim, for that update. Yay for Freakers! Okay. Oh, you know what? I guess I could tell you about my day. I went to the Antique Tractor, and I will share this again, just because. Tri-State Antique Engine and Threshers Association. They, it's a three-day thing, and, oh my God, they had some steam engines there. I took... Uh, took pictures of all of the stuff that was in the parade and next week hopefully I will be able to um, get some of those uploaded for y'all but they had steam engines that were freaking massive and the horsepower that they had was less than my riding mower it's freaking amazing some of this stuff some of the cool equipment that they man we got it so damn easy we really do. People have no clue. Even brought home a freshly cut uh, cedar shingle. So, you know, because they had the equipment there and they were cutting cedar shingles. They were cutting logs and uh, um, site wood siding and all kinds. It was cool to watch a lot of this stuff. And homemade sloppy joes, homemade blueberry pie, and um, homemade baked beans and they were making ice cream there and it was just really a pretty cool thing I had a really really good time so um, look forward to going again next year when can spend a whole day there <laughs> instead of going no we've got to leave by 3 30 because I got to be back for the radio <laughs> <laughs> oh my farmer kind of gave me a look a couple of times but that's okay he still loves me so let's see do I have anything else that's just a real quickie probably not but let me check nope that's not what I wanted okay I think I'll start on this one real fast let me see how long it is Or maybe not. I'll save that for next week. Save it for next week. I don't want to. I don't want to end on a downer. So, life simple truths. What is that? Do I have time? Probably not. Okay. Hmm. Apparently, I have gone through all of my stuff. All of my stuff. So. Dun, dun. What's going on over here on Fakey Book? Let me see if I got find something over here I can find. Okay. Nope. You know what? I'm out of stuff. I can't find nothing else. Um, I do have this. Sometimes the bad things that happen in our lives put us directly in the path of the best things that will ever happen to us. 
sometimes you got you got to consider that. Always look at all of the different. I mean, you know, you don't have to always be. God dang it! I'm wearing your victim card, because you know what? Life really is pretty cool. It really is. I mean, so long as you're breathing, it's still pretty cool. So. Um, I guess I'm going to get the heck out of here. Y'all have an absolutely amazing rest of your evening. I may pop in during Faker's Ball, and then again, I may not because I'm going to go pick up my mother in the morning, and we're going down to my youngest daughter's for a family thing. So I won't be around this weekend. So y'all have an absolutely amazing weekend and a rest of your evening. And I guess I am out of here. But remember, I truly do love you all. And I wish you all enough. Good night.